Hey guys, it's me, Eori Gimmick here, and we're back with another light cone video, and we're going to be talking about Aventurine's signature light cone here. We're going to be talking about a few things. How good is it for him? Do you really need it on your account? Is it like a mass pool? And how versatile it is, because more importantly, if one day you have a better light cone that you want to give to Aventurine, can this be used for anyone else? And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. The number that I want you to focus on in terms of base stats is 661. The defense, we will see it for the other stuff later on, don't worry, I'll remind you as well. But this is very crucial for Aventurine because you want to hit 4k defense as quickly as you can. And this massive base stat is going to help him get there. Not to mention, if we look at the effects real quick here for his signature light cone, increases the defense by 40% at super in position 1. This is a massive buff. You can hit 4k threshold very easily to get the maximum crit rate buff that you can give as well as like massive uh, shield for your whole entire team and damage as well. So this is a hybrid defensive and offensive uh, light cone. Not only does it help him reach the 4k stat, but when the wearer provides a shield to an ally, which he does very often, the wearer's crit damage increases by 40% for two turns. A lot of crit damage as well for a defensive character. When the wearer's follow attack hits the enemy target, which Aventurine does very often too, there's a 100% base chance to increase the damage taken by the target enemy by 10%, lasting for 2 turns. Now the thing that I'm interested to know is, is this a debuff? Because it sounds like a debuff, which means that he will have more debuff in his overall kit, making him viable with a Doctor Ratio Team Com, even more viable with a Doctor Ratio Team Com, Akron Team Com and stuff like that. So definitely worth, I definitely will be watching and seeing this once it goes live to test it out and then before I actually like rank it based on whether this one does help. It's, it's a nice bonus, but overall the stats are already quite good. So let me just like alternate tab real quick and let's go into the game engine here. First things first, I want to talk about the other light cones in the game and do you really need this signature light cone for him? So 661 is the base defense and let's take a look at some of the other key preservation light cones in the game. You have textures of memories, which is at 529. You don't get that whopping 40% defense over here. So it is already very significantly stronger than texture of memories, the free to play five star. You have moment of victory. This is arguably can be gotten from the standard shop. So it could be free to play as well. Uh, if you save up for it in the long term. So this one gives you 595 defense, which is like more than 10% less than the signature light cone. At the same time, it's only like almost slightly more than half the defense bonus that you get. So definitely the Aventurine signature light cone allows you to build much more offensive builds. As we talked about in our build guide video for Aventurine, if you haven't like gone into his in-depth guide of like, what to gear him and stuff, we talked about it there. I highly recommend you check it out if you are a bit confused. Like why is EOD keep talking about 4K threshold? What stats do you need to get 4K? We already talked about it there uh, on Fire MC as a dummy. So you can actually prepare all the like the relics and stuff beforehand, which is very nice because we're getting like triple times the relics soon, right? Tomorrow or something like that. So very, very good time to start farming. So that is like some of the alternatives that we have here. Do I think that light cone is necessary? Honestly, I don't think so. Considering that sometimes if you are unlucky, a light cone can be equivalent to the cost of a signature character, you have many, many good alternatives already. And let me just like share with you a few. You have Trend of Universal Market, which uh, doesn't give him as much defense. It's, it's like very lacking 400 defense, but it does help him give some debuff to the enemy here where if you're looking for that debuff aspect of the light cone, this is pretty nice. You get some defense back and he also is able to play in you know, the DOT teams, adding to his versatility. So I think this one is pretty good as well. Other than that, of course, you have offensive one, like this is the paid one. This is me, paid battle pass one. It gives you like some sort of defense and some damage as well, so a bit of a hybrid. There are quite a lot of free-to-play options. Even Destiny Threats for Woven is also a free-to-play alternative. You can get it at Super in Position 5 for free from the light cone shops, the free light cone shops. And this gives you a decent amount of defense, not like 661 kind of high, not you don't get that 40 percent defense bonus but you still get quite a lot of it um what this means of course using a lower tier defense gear with base stats they are much lower means you just have to run more defense percentage main stats rather than switching them out for more offensive gear uh, but i think it's very livable especially if you can save yourself one limited character worth of resources i will do it personally so um, then of course now we talk about whether it's good for adventuring whether i think it's necessary let's go into the menu and talk about the other preservation units in the game how versatile is this light cone actually? 
Uh, in my opinion, I don't think it's very, very versatile. Probably the only other character that can fully utilize this kit is March 7, because it gives her that defense, it gives her massive stats as well, 661 defense. Her shielding skills off the defense, she does follow up attack from now and then, uh, from time to time. But overall, March 7 is actually a split scaling character, so she doesn't really care too much about the defense because her damage uh, mostly scales off the attack unless you have Eidolons and then it does split scale a little bit. But um, she she does want both attack and defense, which that light cone only gives purely defense and some crit. So not very versatile in my opinion. The other character that people might be thinking of to use it with is where is my Japat? My uh, just to share, I have an E6 Japat before E0 Clara. This game hates me totally. But this is probably the other alternative that some people might think of. I don't really think it's very good because the you don't really need thick sh thicker shields from their preservation characters. For any of you who played your part, and eventually likely it'll be the same case, the shield is already so thick that one, like 500 defense more is not gonna matter in totality. So if I were you, I would just skip it, save your resources. I am a person who hardly pulls on support light cones. Like I don't have Lotar's light cone. I don't have Ho-Ho's light cone. I don't have Fushan's light cone. Uh, I, and yeah, basically that's the mostly the supports in the game. And I think eventually it's the same scenario. I probably won't be picking up as well. There's a lot of cheaper alternatives available. I just want to save myself some resources. And I hope these thoughts uh, help you as well make a decision whether you want to get it or not. I highly recommend you check out this video at the right at the end where we talk about Aventurine's build guide because that is the one that is much more important, understanding how to build a character. And check it out. See you in the next video.